Hi, I'm John, and I'm not going to like hey, John. Um, a little bit, I guess, about the history. Um, you know, I, I grew up all over the place, <laughs> Washington, Oklahoma, uh, at about, I guess it was probably age 15, well, 13, actually, um, found, you know, that there's substances out there um, that would make me feel better about myself. And so um, I definitely, you know, I should have, if I would have known a little bit more back then, I guess I would have been able to have some kind of insight on it, but, uh, you know, slowly turned into something that progressed and progressed and continued. Um, didn't matter what substance it was, uh, you know, I just did anything, anything that would make me feel different, you know, anything that gave me a lot more positiveness about myself, um, led me down a lot of different, a lot of different paths, a lot of different people, uh, got experiences that I never want to have again, for sure, um, had some definitely learning curves, uh, and got to a point, uh, I guess it was, well, I got to a point a few times, but never uh, to the actual ability to want to change. Uh, I've tried a few times to quit, uh, and the result was not right, because I wasn't in it, I wasn't trying to do it, I wasn't, I was there, you know, but it was just for a slip sign, you know, it wasn't for uh, any actual desire. Uh, and then it was about four years ago, I had gotten myself clean again and sober, and I ended up falling back out. Uh, and when I went out, you know, this last time, it was for four years, um, I, ended up, I wound up getting myself into a lot more predicaments, um, in and out of jail constantly uh, for multiple different times. Um, one year it was, I was in for three months, out for a month, in for three months, out for a month. It was uh, kind of starting to become a constant thing. Uh, I didn't learn by all those times in jail. Um, I just continued to go back out because I felt like those were my newfound family. You know, they connected with me. You know, we all we all had the same kind of issues. We all had the same dilemma going on. Uh, we had the same disease, and it took me a long time um, and a lot of support off and on, uh, or the ability to recognize the support, I guess, uh, to be able to get to a spot where about a year ago uh, I finally decided that something needed to change. Um, now in 2008, my father committed suicide and I found him 40 minutes after he put a 12 gauge to his head. And at that point, my high, my, I had higher power before that. And at that point, I, like a lot of people do when bad stuff happens, you know, big bad stuff happens, I was like, oh, it's all your fault. You know, it's, I can't believe you do that. Why would you take a loved one from me? And for 15 years, my basically my whole adult life, it was, I can fix my own self. You know, I can, I can go my route. I can go my direction. I can, I can focus on me. And, and as long as I just go through stuff and then I learn from it, you know, it doesn't matter if I'm making the same things, just different ways, you know, screwing it up. Um, I, you know, just continue on that road. And so about, yeah, like a year, maybe a year and a half ago, um, I, something clicked and I was just, I became tired. I was tired of dealing with it. I was tired of being broke. I was tired of living in my truck for four years in the back of it because I had a cool Ford Ranger with a canopy and it was hot, you know, it was perfect for the time, you know, because I had, had a bed back there. I had all my stuff back there, everything that I, materialistic that I didn't really need um, and a lifestyle that I thought was what I was destined to be anymore because uh, I had put myself in such a predicament that I thought that I couldn't get out of it. Um, at that time, uh, when I did, when something finally did click, it was, it was kind of a small progression. You know, at first it was, oh, you know, I might need something outside of myself to help me get out of this, you know, get out of this lifestyle because I want something to change. And, uh, but I was doing, I was, I would say like fake, um, fake tries, you know, I, I would call the, I would call rehabs, but I would make sure to call them either on the weekends or after hours, you know, I, but I was trying, you know, <laughs> I, was, I was calling them, you know, that's all that mattered, right? In my head, I was like, oh, I'm doing something, and uh, it, you know, obviously wasn't enough, um, and I ended up just continuing on that road, um, 
and to the point where I was like kind of scared and I started getting back into like my early 20s depressions uh super you know super bad depressions and I was like you know I shouldn't be feeling like this because I you know this is the reason why I use these outside substances is strictly to fix that and if that's not working like obviously there's something wrong and uh that led me to a point where I finally started praying again, you know, I, I started talking to my higher power and I was like, Hey, you know, I, it's been a long time. I've been away. Uh, I, you know, is there anything that you could help me with? You know, and it still, it still was a, uh, just asking when I needed a type of thing, but this time it was just slightly more sincere. And I got a good wake up call, um, something I definitely wasn't expecting. And I, uh, was asleep in my truck with the car on in a parking lot in Auburn and I woke up to four cop cars and even though I passed the field sobriety test, they, you know, it, it was, it was just a, a matter of circumstances and I ended up going back to jail, um, on a, on a physical control because I wasn't driving. It wasn't technically a DUI, um, but a physical control is the same. Spent a hundred days in jail, even though it was a charge that, you know, I, still feel like, you know, it's, I should have only technically been there a week or two, but, um, I don't regret it in a sense. I gratify it because if it wasn't for that hundred days, I wouldn't be at where I'm at right now. Um, and, and obviously, you know, what happened afterward, um, in that hundred days, I just happened to get a, a bunkie, a cell, a cellmate that was very into the, his higher power and. I just started listening to him and I'm like, oh, you know, <laughs> so I started talking to him about it. And then I started saying, oh, okay, maybe I can start doing this. Maybe I can start talking to my higher power. Maybe I can try to get this connection back that had been lost for 15 years. And slowly but surely I had to do some work on myself. You know, I, I had to put in some of the actions before I realized that I was putting in some of the actions. I, I thought I was just, you know, changing my head and little did I know I was literally like drastically changing my mindset. Um, I was able to open up. I mean, it might have had to been at times when, you know, everybody else was asleep because, again, I was, I was in jail at the time and so I would be turned towards the wall. But I would still, I'd start, I started letting stuff out. I started accepting stuff. I started listening to uh, people that, you know, uh, listening to books, really, and this other person that just happened to be with me almost the whole time I was there. Um, it got me to a place where I was, my brain was finally able to accept, you know, able to accept this thing I wasn't recognizing, you know, this help that I wasn't understanding because for my whole adult life, I had been in one mindset. I had always done it my own self. And finally I came down, I came to a spot where I was just like, okay, you know, I've been trying to do my own thing for 15 years. I'm still trying to do my own thing while I'm trying to ask you, but I want it my way. You know, and so finally I just broke down and I said, Hey, I, I, I give it up. You know, I, I give up me, you know, I give up my control over my life. I need help. I, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm tired of living the life I was living. Um, and it, if it wasn't, if it hadn't been for that change, I don't know if I would be here today speaking, uh, well, definitely probably not here today speaking. <laughs> um, uh, upon that realization, things started falling into place. I, uh, was contacting a friend of mine that I've known since 2008. Her and I started using together. Um, and, you know, luckily she just celebrated nine years of sobriety. Um, and she's been a very big support, you know, whether it be backed away because I was in heavy addiction or not. Um, we've always stayed just somewhat in contact. It's just had to be healthy, you know, for her sobriety. And uh, I, when I was in, when I was in jail, I had a video visit with her and I was telling her how I went to court and they said that I could do house arrest, but I forgot to tell them I didn't have a home, you know, <laughs> and all I had was the clothes on my back and I knew that there was two directions I could go and I was destined. I was like, no, I don't want to get out on my own. I don't want to be released by myself. Um, and, but when I had mentioned that to her, she's like, oh, you know, she's like, I'll take a chance. You know, don't tell them that you don't have a home. Tell them that you do have a home. She talked to her husband. Um, we had tried this before and I went back out, but you know, I, Luckily, I had the ability to know that I couldn't do it on my own and somebody else that knew I couldn't do it on my own, and, but they could give me a healthy support, you know, and 
Um, instead of me trying to decide which road I would go on and hoping that I would be strong enough to go on the right road, that road came to me and picked me up from jail. Um, <laughs> and then she's like, oh, guess what we're doing for the first week? We're hitting a meeting after meeting after meeting. So I went to a meeting, you know, that first week, every single day, um, I found my both of my home groups. Um, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, I go to Kenny's. Uh, on Fridays, my other home group is the hot stove. At the hot stove, I was nervous to go in. Her sponsor, um, she had, her sponsor's husband went to that, so she was able to call him and meet me outside, so I wasn't so nervous. And that day I got a sponsor. That day I started working the steps. That day I knew that I was finally like doing something towards this sobriety thing, but it was you know un unfathomable to me. And through the process of working the steps, through the process of the past six months, I was able to at first just taking everybody's suggestions because I knew that my whole adult life I had known only one side of it. I had only known my way. I, I you know, I didn't know how my mind was gonna be. I knew that my mind was here, there, everywhere, but but except for where it was supposed to be. And luckily, um, through this process, through it, you know, I'm able to live an awesome life right now compared to what I was living. Uh, I quickly got things back, my life back, and my, my mental state is back. Um, I, because I was able to let go and let my higher power guide me instead of me trying to guide me. And because I was able to take suggestions about, hey, I don't, you know, am I supposed to be acting like this? Because I really don't know if I'm, you know, I, I don't know. And it took a lot of uh, uncomfortability to, you know, um, to get me to where I'm at now because everything was out of my comfort zone. I didn't even know what my comfort zone was, but I know everything was out of my comfort zone. <laughs> and uh, slowly but surely, now I've, I've gained confidence. I've gained, um, I've gained an employment. I've gained a vehicle. I've gained my license back. I've gained the ability to be, um, I just started step eight. Um, I am now able to raise my hand to, you know, get a sponsor that'll help me stay, you know, help keep me accountable as well as, you know, be able to work somebody else through the stuff like I got the grace of. And, uh, yeah, now I'm standing here today and I'm, you know, life is, life is good. I mean, there's ups and downs, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm riding it out because when it's down, it's still better than, you know, my downs are still better than my great days when I was using, um, when I was, you know, in active addiction, it, it's just, life is a lot better. I had to realize that just cause you get down doesn't mean you you have to go and fix yourself like you always used to for 15 years. You can actually take a step back, um, talk to your higher power. I, I talk to my higher power literally like they're right next to me. You know, I say, hey, this is how I'm feeling. I, I want to go back out <laughs> because I don't feel like anything, you know, like, and, and just because I was able to take that step back, I'm able to literally within two hours understand and have this new, um, new road that I'm going on because I literally took a step back and just asked, hey, I don't know what, what your plan is, please, please, I, I need to get out of this bunk, and I, I would like to go on that plan. And uh, the, the ability is the mindset, the admiration for life, the, the gratitude I have for everything. I mean, if it wasn't for the support, if it wasn't for the hand of AA, if it wasn't for the fellowship I get from both of my home groups, um, if it wasn't for, you know, everything, my higher power, like everything, all of all parts of the triangle, you know, I, I do service work at both of my, you know, I started that very first week. Um, I started service work at, at one of my home groups and then switched to the other one. And now I'm doing, you know, multiple things. I'm excelling at work. I'm excelling at, you know, at, at everything. And um, life is great. You know, <laughs> I, I, I can't be more thankful um, every day. You know, I, I know where I'd be if I didn't have things in my life. Um, the support I have now is outstanding. The support um, I'm able to take in and realize and the ability to like say right after, you know, something like when I stress out or something, the ability to be like, hey, I did that. <laughs> I did that without going back out, you know? I got through that. It was, it was a little hard, but I got through that, you know? And um, it, I'm loving life now. So uh, I guess that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs>